Hi, welcome back. This is Esan. Uh, the question that we discuss here in this segment is how is our memory structured? Precisely speaking, we are only going to talk about short term memory. So the most commonly accepted characteristics of memory structure is that a part of memory is oriented toward events that have just occurred while a part is related to events of the past. Based on this idea, memory is seen as comprising of two functional systems, short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory is usually thought as a system that merges characteristics and functions which are associated with sensory, perceptual, and attention. This section of the memory is very active structure, is a very active structure as it operates in all situations that you can think about and helps you to respond accordingly to the demands of the right now present situation. It also serves as a temporary workspace to integrate present information with long term experiences or memories. Now that we have a, a functional or uh, the processing idea about short term memory, let's have a look into how these are stored. To explain this idea, we are going to divide the idea of storing in two parts. One is the duration of the memory and the other being the capacity. Uh, Peterson and Peterson showed that we tend to forget words that has been presented to us once. Surprisingly, this duration is only 20 to 30 seconds. Here you can see in the graph, after almost 18 seconds, the probability of recall is very low. Uh, similar results featuring motor memory has been highlighted by Adam and Dijkstra. Results of their experiment indicate that arm positions in space that are experienced only one time each are lost from working memory at a rate which is very comparable to the verbal case that we have discussed earlier in the previous slide. As you can see, as the retention interval has been increased, our capacity, our yeah, our capacity to reproduce the movement becomes low. So we make more errors. Now, having some idea about the duration of the memory, we'll talk about, now we'll talk about capacity, as in how much information can we accommodate. This idea was first explored by George Miller in a famous paper titled Magic Number 7. The paper showed evidence to indicate that we have the capacity to hold 7 plus minus 2 items. This idea relating to the quantification of memory capacity was reinforced by various researchers. Wilberg and Samela showed that joystick movement errors increase after 8 movements. Now, let us talk a little about the various factors that affect this capacity. So, let us first We'll first talk about serial position. The idea is similar uh, to the one that you experience while taking any exam. When you prepare for the exam, you have seen that the chapter you read first and the last in a series are remembered the best. This is known as the primary recency effect. Uh, this has been shown in various studies. Here in a study, the subjects were blindfolded and underwent linear positioning task involving three, six, or nine discrete movements. Later, they were asked to recall the same movements in the same order. The graph shows that when the movement was composed of three discrete movements, the error was less and more or less uniform, as you can see here in the blue line. Whereas in the case of longer movements comprising of six, which is the orange one, and the nine, which is the black one movements, uh, uh, so comprising of six or nine movements, the participants initial error was less. The error increased while recalling the intermediate movement sections and decreased at the end, as you can see here and here. Researchers think that such limitations uh, they have also seen some evidence that such limitations can be increased by organizing information. This process of organizing or reorganizing information is called chunking. A chunk is the largest meaningful unit in the presented material that the person can recognize. 
more of this will be talk, discussed in the discussion sections. Uh, moving on, capacity can also be increased through meaningfulness. What do I mean by this? Say a person was given feedback after a certain semicircular movement. How meaningful the feedback was can help in the retention process. Here, the verbal label is like uh, feedback given in terms of good job, not so good, maybe you should do a little better, uh, whereas the no label is like you just don't care. Whereas the clock face means, say for instance, somebody moved a certain distance and the coach says, okay, you're at close to two o'clock position. So you can see based on the way the feedback is given, our process of uh, our retention is better. So uh, what are the implications? Say for instance, you are a physical therapist and you have to explain uh, something to a patient who has just suffered a stroke and wants to get back his wants to get his independence back. So whenever you are going to give some information to him about his movements, you need to think about strategies. You need to present informations as chunks so that it's easier for him to process and remember. Moreover, the feedbacks that you give should be meaningful. And always remember the first and the last pieces of information are remembered the best. So, thanks. Uh, in the next segment, we are going to talk about long-term memory. Thank you.